space elevator news. Scientists have created an inflatable space elevator. Now, what when I think of an if anything inflatable, if you guys are familiar with like car dealerships and they have that inflatable man that is like moving everywhere, that's what I think of when I think of anything inflatable. But let's see what they're gonna do to get this thing moving. Astronauts would ascend 12 miles into the stratosphere before taking off on a new plans to build a space lift. So what I think is like a straight elevator that would just go from the ground up into up into the space 12 miles and then the spaceship will be on the top of the platform tower I don't understand how they that they would get the spaceship up until up onto the top of the tower they don't mention that in the article I would assume that maybe they would just put the like maybe, maybe the elevator is big enough where they can put the spacecraft inside the elevator I don't know but this is based out of a Canadian firm so a Canadian Canadian firm has been granted the ability for a space elevator in which it will shoot cargo 12.4 miles into the stratosphere from where it can be launched more easily. So I, re I really don't understand this but maybe it can work out in the long run. In this article it says that it will cut down the cost of space flight by around a third because they are using less fuel because obviously the spacecraft is starting off 12 miles higher than it normally would so it doesn't have to do a do as many stages this this would only do one stage take off instead of multiple ones I don't know how many it does um, on a normal flight off the ground but the less fuel is being used by a third which is cutting the cost but later on I will talk in the article about how potentially that they would just reuse the money that they're saving into another part of the reflight as you guys want to call it at the top of the tower, spaceships would be able to launch in a single state to orbit, returning to the top of the tower for refueling and reflight. See, this is where I'm talking about where the money that they saved using less fuel might come back to bite them in the ass because they could potentially be using more money to relaunch that same spacecraft into orbit again because they got to set up all the, all the, I don't know what they're called, it's like the gas canisters, I don't, I'm not too familiar with spacecrafts and all that. But from what I've seen in books and whatnot, when they launch into orbit, there's something that falls off and that they just, that falls into the ocean. Maybe that's what um, could potentially be more money, I don't know. But what I think is that that they're gonna be using more money than they're saving from, re from relaunching um, ships back into orbit after refueling. And that quote was from Dr. Brennan Quine which is the inventor of the space elevator. So, the engineers in the past thought that this theory of a space elevator would never happen because no materials could hold that, hold the tower that high up in the sky. Now, the engineers based their theory off of a tower that would be 22,000 miles high up in the sky, which is pretty close to where the satellites are and where all the satellites are roaming. But this new design by Thoth only goes 12.4 miles so it's a dramatic decrease and they have the materials to launch up a inflatable space elevator now that they they have um, supported beams up at the top I, I would assume made out of like metal or some kind of hard pipes to support the spacecraft and all of and like the refueling process and everything and all the gas the tower which is named Thoth X Tower would be inflatable with reinforced segments at the top, as I just talked about. The tower could also be used for research, communications, and generate power from high up wind turbines. So what I originally thought that this tower was going to be with just a lift off area for the spacecraft, it turns out it's not. It turns out it's going to be used for scientific research, so it's basically going to be an office tower for, like, it's going to be like the next NASA in, in um, Canada, from what it sounds like. Communications, communications. I would assume is going to be from the the people in the the room that's monitoring their space their space orbit and monitoring the satellites and whatnot and generate energy from high up wind turbines. I didn't know that they had had wind turbines up that twenty or twelve point four miles in the in the sky. I did not know that. I don't know how they're gonna figure that part out, but. Even though the tower would not go all the way into space, 
it will still stand 20 times taller than the current highest structure, which is located in Dubai, which is pretty cool. The I will actually put a picture of the of the highest man-made structure in Dubai right now, and from what I seen before I started recording, it's pretty massive. And I thought the twin towers were were massive before they got taken down, unfortunately. But this structure in Dubai is just absolutely massive, and for the tower to be 20 times more taller than the structure in Dubai is just insane. There is no um, sorry if I'm looking over here. I have a uh, the key points right down on my computer. There's no date on when this is going to be launched or anything, or even created or even started for that matter. Um, this is all that it says. So in conclusion, I think it's a pretty cool idea to launch up a spacecraft 12 miles already into the into the sky. There's only a few points that I don't really understand that's going to make this happen. One is. I don't know how they're going to get the spacecraft up there, and they already said that they're going to be shooting the cargo, like I would assume like all the fuel and all the necessary equipment to launch any spacecraft, but the spacecraft is going to be massive, so I don't understand how they would get the spacecraft from the ground up into the tower, especially with all the communications, research, and most likely offices that will be in this tower also. I would assume since it says it's going to be used for research also. I don't really get it because it's going to be inflatable so I guess that they can just take it down but what are they going to do with all the research and communications and all that stuff in there? I don't know. We'll see if, if there's any follow up articles like later on down the road I would definitely um, re-talk about them and update you guys but this is going to wrap up this video. If you guys missed the first news article I did last week the link will be down in the description to that video. and. The link to this article, if you guys want to read it for yourselves, will be down in the in the description box below. Also, so go ahead and check that out and leave me a comment. Leave, leave me a comment, letting me know your opinions on this topic. Inflatable space elevator. So, until next time, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Airplane news. Uzbekistan airway is to wait passengers before boarding. Interesting. Let's see why. Uzbekistan national carrier plans to wait passengers with their carry-on luggage before boarding as they.